My name is Jamin Gerker. I'm a realtor in South Central Alaska, and I help people to build intentional and significant legacies for themselves and their families by coaching them in real estate. And today, I'm going to be answering a question I get fairly often, and that is, how much do you pay in utilities in Alaska? So, we're going to answer that question, and we're going to start at about 30,000 foot view, talk about the data we have from the um, U.S. Energy Administration, and then we're going to dive down a little bit deeper and see specifically how much you can expect to pay for utilities in the Alaska, or I'm sorry, in the Anchorage and Matsu areas. So we're going to be jumping into that in just a second. Make sure that before we get started, you give this video a like and the subscribe so you can receive more information like this in the future. And without further ado, let's go and jump into it. Now, just getting started here, just looking at the data we have from the U.S. Energy Administration, Alaska is actually in the bottom 10 of the states with the most amount of energy that's, that's used. So bottom 10% of the overall amount of energy that's being used. The reason for that is really just because Alaska doesn't have that big of a population. So for that reason, we're going to be kind of an outlier, but that's, that's good just kind of know for the 30,000 foot. A more accurate way to determine the actual expense that people are gonna spend in Alaska for utilities and energy is gonna be looking at the per capita. And just looking at that, Alaska is number four out of 50 states for the amount of, of energy that each person is going to, to pay for. Now the reason for that, and again, it kind of skews the numbers here a little bit, just because Alaska is a smaller state, so you know we aren't gonna be using a whole lot of energy, but also it's not like New York where we're gonna be able to spread that per capita out really, really far. So for that reason, yeah, number four, but you know, it's a good indicator you're gonna be paying more than more than normal um, than you would in other states, but it's it's just something to, to be aware of. Now let's break down the two biggest expenses that most people are gonna have on their utility bills in Alaska. That is gonna be their natural gas and that's gonna be their electricity. In the summertime, you're really not gonna be using a whole lot of gas uh, for the heating or electricity really for that matter just because it's pretty mild outside. We don't have AC because it's so mild and you're gonna leave most of the windows open and you're gonna get most of your light that way and you're obviously not using the heater either during the summertime. So for that reason, you're gonna have a high usage during the winter, pretty low during the summer. So it all kind of just balances out. But just looking at the overall average of how much each one of these, um, how much each one of these, um, um, these energy sources cost you per person is in the US overall, you're gonna pay about $11.85 per cubic feet of natural gas. In Alaska, it's gonna be a little bit higher of $12.34 per cubic foot. Now, looking at the electricity, for the US, it is gonna be $13.14 per kilowatt. In Alaska, it's gonna be $23.17 per kilowatt. So, a little bit higher. That's, that's what, well, a little bit. Uh, it's gonna be higher, especially for the electricity. And that's, that's gonna be kind of where we see the, the per capita really kind of kicking in and where it does kind of make sense. You're gonna pay more in Alaska for electricity for natural gas, not, not as, as much, partly because we are an energy state. Has this been useful for you so far? If it has, make sure that you give this video a like and make sure you post any questions you have in the comment section down below. Now, without further ado, let's go and jump into some examples real quick to show you what people are actually paying for utilities in this specific area right now. Now, the first example we have here is a property that's going to be, you know, more or less in the middle of Anchorage. It's in a, you know, fairly busy area. This property is going to be just shy of 1,200 square feet. And let's go ahead and take a look at the kind of utilities that you're going to be paying on that one. It is actually gonna be, you know, kind of the disclosure from the seller. And I actually, you know, just pinned this, uh, this gentleman's property just a little bit ago, but he says they actually paid about $70 on average, about $70 a month. So keep in mind, 
high during the winter, low during the summertime. So on average, about 70 a month for gas. For electric, about 65. Water is going to be about 125. Sewer, 85. And refuse, you know, waste is going to be 45. So that's going to be, uh, you know, pretty, you know, pretty basic size property of about uh, three bedroom, two bath, two garage, just under 1,200 square feet. So that gives you kind of a, a good indication off the get-go here. Now let's take a look at a couple other properties. Now the second example we have, again, is going to be another property in Anchorage. And this one is going to be, um, you know, it's going to be in a pretty established part of town. So it's, it's going to have access to obviously city sewer and um, water and electricity and all that. So that's good. Just looking here at the specs. So it's going to be just under 1,100 square feet. Um, again, this is someone whose home I helped to sell recently. It is a town style or townhouse style home. And it is pretty cozy in there. But just looking at the overall utilities then, what we saw for a property like this is that per month, the, the gas is gonna be about $66. Electricity on average is about 133. Okay, so that's, you know, that's, not, doing, that's not doing too bad. Looking at the water, that is going to be about $95. And looking at the, the waste removal, about $15. So again, this is just another example of something more or less in town and uh, kind of give you an idea for what you can expect to pay for utilities there. Now looking at just one more property here in Anchorage, this, keep in mind, is going to be an Anchorage. It's going to be four bedroom, two bath, two car garage. It's going to be a little bit bigger than the previous examples we've seen at about, you know, just under 2,200 square feet. So more or less kind of an average size. Um, the thing that's unique about this property is that it actually does have a septic tank for, for its sewage. So that's going to be really significant. I'll show you why in, in just a minute here. So with it being a larger property, it's kind of a gas bill just on a monthly basis was about 150. The electric was just over a hundred dollars and the sewer was actually $200 a year. And the reason it is so significantly cheaper than what you're going to have with the, the city is that you have one person who goes out a year to, to kind of service it and make sure you know, everything's being taken care of. And, that's pretty much it for the amount of work that you have to do once you have that, um, you know, once you have a septic tank in there. Now, the thing that I would say about a septic tank is that once they do start getting old, you're eventually going to need to replace it. And that does turn into about a, you know, ten, twelve thousand dollar um, replacement somewhere in that ballpark for how much it's going to take to, to get that done. So just something to keep in mind. Yes, it is much lower on a, on a monthly basis, but eventually the, the piper is going to have to get paid. So that's, that's for a property that is just over 2,200 square feet. And lastly, I have an example here for another property that I sold. This one is actually out in Palmer, and this one's going to be a little further out than you're going to see with... Um, then you're going to see with some of the other examples because the other ones we're looking at is over here kind of in Anchorage proper. And this one's going to be a little further out into the Matsu Valley, specifically in the, the Butte area. So it's a, it's a really nice, you know, kind of property. I'll show you the photos here, but just shy of 1500 square feet, you know, two baths, uh, three bedrooms. So it's a pretty good starter home. Um, I know the photos don't really show it and I was kind of disappointed the way this worked out, but uh, this property had like bigger than life views of the, uh, the Pioneer Peak right behind it, but you know, we just couldn't do it because it was snowing the day we went out there to get photos and it uh, pended too quickly for us to go get photos after that. But beautiful house, 
as you can see here, you know, pretty, pretty darn new. And it's got kind of those high ceilings in there. Oh, there you go. Get a little bit of the view of the, of the mountains out there. But the thing that's really unique about this property from the two that we've seen before is that this property is actually on a well and it's on a septic tank. So how that, uh, it really does impact the overall utilities because the electric bill on this property, well, hold on, actually I should say the, um, yeah, so the gas bill on this property is about $90 and the electric bill is gonna be 100. And then after that, on a monthly basis, they really don't have any, any extra expenses they're gonna have for the well or for the septic tank. Um, they're gonna to have to have annual servicing, but you know, as we saw in the previous example, the property over in, over in um, Anchorage, that's usually pretty minimal um, the issue where you have to eventually pay the pipers where the property has you've owned it for decades and you got to do some kind of some long-term maintenance that eventually needs to be done on it but by and large it's not a bad way to save on monthly utilities so that's uh that's another one that that i sold just recently as well so those are going to be just some really basic examples and they're just going to be a couple of them obviously the utilities on each home are are going to be a little bit different just depending on the layout uh, how tall the ceilings are how well insulated it is um, do you have alternative sources of heat in the house like a wood stove um, all those factors are going to kind of come into play but some of the the biggest indicator on your monthly utilities is going to be do you have a well and you have a septic um, just on a monthly basis also keep in mind they're going to be they're going to be still cheaper in the long run but kind of the big important thing to remember is you are going to have some larger maintenance or replacement you need to do on those systems as you start going into having owned it for decades on end so just something to be aware of if you're uh, if you're pricing it out so i hope this has been useful for you if you have any questions for me make sure you post those down below in the comment section if you have i'm doing it the best i can to make sure i respond to as many questions as i can but um, if you have something you just you have to get an answer from me by all means use the link um, down below to my facebook page and that's going to be the best way to get a hold of me directly um, as always, make sure you like this video, make sure you subscribe, and let me know if you have any other questions for videos that you want me to do in the future.